a free audiobook if you sign up for a trial membership they will give us $15 so this is a great way to support the podcast another way to support the craftsman is by going to our portal located at duncantrussell.com and going through the amazon.com portal on the website every purchase you make amazon will give a small percentage to the craftsman you can also support this podcast by going to duncantrussell.com and buying a t-shirt sticker or poster located in the shop section of said website thank you for listening now let's start the first episode of the craftsman don't act like an idiot at the bar just do not drink and be quiet if you have a warm personality and come from a positive place you will do great but don't be a comedian as in you stand on stage and do stand-up comedy and make fun of Islam and Muslims. Welcome to The Craftsman, a podcast dedicated to teaching young performers the art and craft of stand-up comedy. The Craftsman, with comedians Brendan Walsh from Chelsea Lately and Johnny Pemberton from Chelsea Lately. And me, Duncan Trussell, your host, who has not been on Chelsea Lately. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast formerly known as the Duncan Trussell Family Hour Podcast. Uh, I've decided to take a turn uh, with the theme of the podcast. Uh, as much as I would love to talk about philosophy and spirituality and politics and the various things that I've spoken about on this podcast with so many wonderful guests, uh, I feel that it's time for a change. I was recently at a comedy club and I um, I can't really think of a nice way to say this. It just seems like a lot of the younger comics have gotten off course with uh, the craft of stand-up comedy, which is why I decided to rename my podcast The Craftsman and to make the theme of the podcast the craft of stand-up comedy, the importance of learning the craft of stand-up comedy. And to join me on this podcast, I now have two uh, regular guests, um, Brendan Walsh, Hi everybody, uh, Brendan uh, Brendan Walsh Comedy dot net, and you can follow me on Twitter, Brendan underscore Walsh Comedian on Twitter. Your followers have been zooming up, Brendan. I've noticed that, and congratulations to you. Thanks. It's um, it's all you know. It's all business. It's it's a matter of doing consistent tweets, and um, also you can purchase followers as well. Absolutely, and that's a great move too. You know, let's get into Twitter in a second. I want to introduce our other um, uh, co-host of this uh, show, uh, Johnny Pemberton. Hey, hey, Duncan, great to be here. Love the craft. Um, you know, I may be a little bit newer to the game than you guys, but I uh, just love being here talking about. I mean, talking about my favorite subject. So it's pretty great. Well, it's about time somebody yeah. started a yeah. podcast. Totally. Like this. Well, at you know, Johnny Pemberton, if you want to get real, um, and I'll, I'll hit you back up with an at reply, no problem. We learn when we teach. Uh, I think Gandhi said that, and it can be applied to stand-up comedy, and I think that it is the job and the duty of all comedians who have been honing their craft for mm -hmm. many, many years to uh, kind of be the judge and jury uh, when it comes to what comics out there are doing and oh, yeah. if what they're doing is on the right track or if what they're doing – has gotten off course a little bit. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of laziness in the comedians today. Um, it doesn't seem like people are working on their craft. No, they don't not. know how to craft a joke. They don't know how to sell a joke. You know, I'll say it right now. This is what I'm seeing a lot of. Um, they just don't get it. These kids, mm. they just don't get it. They, they don't think get what you're talking about. They don't get that it's work. They don't get that it's a craft. They just don't get it. Well, I blame the internet for a lot of it. Oh, totally. Cell phones. Well, I, you know, I think what's happened is that um, a lot of comedians have gotten caught up in sort of the uh, lazy habits that can happen to a comic uh, who wants to perform. A lot of times a comic will, instead of spending time working on a joke, you know, when I have a piece that I'm working on, then what I do is I, t I take that piece and I have three different phases where I'll mm -hmm. first write it in my a notebook that I carry around me in my pocket at all times. A, a little story I can I remember: I was at a cafe and I was talking to someone who was, as many people often do, proclaiming that they were a stand-up comedian. And mm -hmm. I said to them, "Oh, and really? Uh, what kind of notebook do you use?" Yeah, yeah. And, and he, moleskin. They, they said, "What?" 
No, they didn't exactly. Mold, did, they said no. They use a phone probably. or like they don't No, 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 write no, no. Notes. No notes? No notes. Oh, there wasn't really? a notebook in his pocket. Well, there wasn't a notebook in, in his shirt. And that's how I – and not that's not a comic. No. If you don't – if you right now, if you're yeah. listening to this – and you have been saying that you're a stand-up comedian, and there is not a moleskin notebook in your pocket. Heavily worn, too. I mean, unless it's fresh off the shelf. Those things... Well, they all start off new, but... They do, but I'm taking that thing out of my pocket probably 16 times the first day. It shouldn't stay I'm new for long. You, no. If you want to be a serious comedian, step number one, spend at least four to five hours a day writing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, minimum. You get a day's pay for a day's work, and if you're one of these comics who has somehow gotten into their head that all you have to do is from time to time sit down with your water bong and scrawl some <laughs> of your whatever's down on your um, crap pad. Do some drugs and write down some swear words, and then saying them into a microphone is not stand-up comedy. Or that just, yeah, or, or, or I've got an idea. I'm going to... Uh, Get stoned on my medicinal marijuana and, and write jokes that appeal to rape culture. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what alternative comedy is. It's uh, alternative to funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Have you heard that before? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good one. And I blame that alternative boom of the 90s oh, no. for a lot of the laziness. You see everybody wearing their sneakers on stage. Mm-hmm. They have Hate a notebook. That. You're on stage. It's a show. Mm-hmm. Put on, dress up. If you're good, don't dress like the audience. You don't want people to think that a busboy wandered on the stage and then started saying swear words into Especially a microphone. Especially yeah. bigger clubs. If you're at a bigger club, they will just they'll laugh. Well, if you're, if you're working in a room, if you're working in a room, yeah, even a B room, they may even they used to be they'd laugh you out the door. A B room will laugh B, you out well, the door. I mean, when I say laugh, I mean like get out of here. What are you doing? People paid. Yeah. One of my favorite things to see in the world of stand-up comedy is. So often, some of these imposter comedians will somehow manage to make it to the feature level at a B room, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you see them walk on stage. They have this confidence that they've gotten from working these alternative rooms. Or just from not knowing. And uh, FYI for the listener, alternative rooms means uh, the back, like the storage area of a record store yes. or a um, coffee shop Cemeteries. where it's just an open mic. Any place without a drink minimum is, I mean, good luck. Good luck finding anything funny there. You know what I mean? Exactly. This is, these are alternative rooms. Or a good comedy club is a place that will go out there and do the work to bring the crowd in. And, and, and the crowd isn't a group of 15 people wearing black, bifocals who like to listen to uh, vinyl records when they're not working at their cafeteria jobs. Mm-hmm. These are uh, tourists. These are people because a good comedy club will pay, what, do what's called paper. They get a cross-section of, of the public of America, to come in. Really? Yeah. 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 And I, good I, people. Good people who have brought been brought there because somebody from that club is mm-hmm. working the street mm-hmm. and is giving out free passes to the show and getting people in there who are there for free, who haven't paid, and who are just there because they want to challenge you right. mm-hmm. to make them laugh. They want to see some funny. And if you go up there wasting their time with whatever crap, like you said, scrolled on your crap pad or something, that just that does not compute in my book and that doesn't well just, a lot of these A rooms when they do the papering giving away free they give people a block of tickets on their birthday if you sign oh, up yeah. for their mailing list yes. then that person's going to come with upwards of 15 people oh, on the their birthday yes. and if you're just up there talking about some indie band and smoking marijuana or and saying a bunch politics? of swear words I mean Good luck appealing to that crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eh, you just ruined someone's birthday, and eh, you're not getting booked in any more a rooms. And you're definitely Ever. not killing. And you're l- not killing. No. Here's one thing's for certain, and uh, you young comics out there who are listening to this, um, you must know that these bookers at a rooms they talk to each other. They talk to yeah, each other. Yeah, people act like they don't. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got a cell phone. They stay in touch, and they're like, "Hey, uh, Jimbo, Jim over here, yeah. kind of went up there and." You could tell he drank all the Coors Light, 
Yeah. Was, went up, said a bunch of swears. Was stoned. Probably was stoned. And was that's st- another thing. If you're going to bring drugs into an A room, mm-hmm. that's illegal. And if you have it on their property, they have every right to call the authorities. Every oh, right. And they I mean, should. They should really. Because it's illegal you for gotta a reason. you got to clean up this riffraff. I mean, I know you mentioned younger comics, but you know what I'm seeing a lot of actually is older comics who are new comics. And that is where you get some real weird stuff happening. Mm. You get these guys who are new to the game. And they're older, so they've got this life experience, but yeah. they just don't get it. Yeah. They are, mm. oh, man. You gotta, here's, the, here's the bottom line, and then I think we should move on yeah. when it comes to i got to go to an audition here. Well, I'm, I'm late for I'm a, late for, yeah. Yeah, so. or, I'm, yeah, I'm running late for an audition as well. I'm Brendan, testing. I think you're testing for something. I'm testing. I have, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I told you guys. Well, if you, I don't know if you checked my blog. But um, I am testing for blog is uh, Brendan Brendan Walsh Comedy dot net. Um, Zed from the real world Miami mm. has his own sitcom, and I'm testing to play his uh, brother slash neighbor. That's Congratulations! Huge. That's huge. Thanks, no, guys. That's huge. Gigantic. Seriously, yeah, that's huge. huge. Moving, that's like a thing. I'm testing for the untitled uh, Kevin Jackson project, which I think is going to be called. Um, Dynamite Bimbos is what they <laughs> that's what they're going with. Oh, wow, okay. I've, I've yeah. read great things about yeah, that. Is that the, FX the or Fox? They, it's I don't really know. I can't remember. I think they're shopping it still. They're doing like a backdoor pilot action thing. Nice. Maybe FX. It's something like that. But it's you know it's Kevin Jackson, so you know it's some pretty heavy hitters in there. Is that on the Sony working. lot? It's going to be probably Sony Paramount or something like that. Okay. Well, I'm, you yeah. know, I'm really excited because I am right now uh, in the running. And uh, from what I hear, I'm very, very close to uh, getting the part of a producer in a Lifetime channel uh, movie about the making of the Chelsea Handler show. Oh, I've heard, um, I've heard about this. Oh, this, yeah. This is great. Yeah. She, have is, you read her book? Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. Um, I, her I, books, I, Brendan. You should uh, see my book. Yeah. Well, the one that talks books. about her. Okay. I mean, I've read all of her books. He- but he- the, he- Hello, vodka. It's me, God. Ch- yeah. Uh, it's dog eared. Whatever it is, it's, so good. it's hilarious. The one thing that, um, that's one of the problem with having Chelsea books around is it doesn't give me the time to work on my pilot auditions because I'm always right. reading. It's so easy to get sucked into it. Yeah. And yeah, how are you going to? St- how are you gonna? And that's the thing. It's so easy to get sucked into anything. You mm-hmm. can get sucked into relationships. This is another thing. I um I was uh I was recently, animals. I Sorry. was talking to this uh, uh, another young comedian, and <laughs> this young comedian was uh <clears throat> saying this. Uh, he wanted, he wanted. He was thinking about asking his girl to marry him. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> you know. Um, do I know and, this guy's name? If I don't know his name. I'm not putting it out. I'm not putting it out there, but mistake. Here's the thing, guys. Here's what it is. Hollywood is a place that we come to what? To work and to succeed. Yeah. Do w- we come do- if you want to get married and have kids and have a white picket fence? Move to Iowa. Go. That's fine. It's fine. Nobody's judging you. We're no, trying to seriously. get to Please our go. auditions. We're trying to get to meetings with our agents and managers. Mm-hmm. And you're driving to get flowers and for you're someone a left that you're turn. in love with. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I, we're not saying don't get married, but ask yourself, number one, can this person help my career? Yes. Number two, is this person well-liked in mm-hmm. the entertainment business? Yes. Do they and, have connections with like a like a old scout old style producer for someone from like Cheers era? Like that's what you want. Oh yeah, I, any, old, any kind of look, any kind, kind of, of producer. And then this is the thing. Like I, so many times there's this thing where people will look down their nose at you because they they see that you are networking. But I'm not here to go to parties no. for fun. I'm not here to go, to hang out with people for fun. I'm here to work. Yeah. On my craft mm-hmm. to develop my stand-up comedy, so that I can get on, maybe get on the panel of Chelsea, or get on a a a, a, a pan and if, if a she, booster, a real if booster. She's listening. Byron Allen's Comics Unleashed. That's yeah, you a, get a huge a stepping like stone. Get on Byron Allen. Mm-hmm. Byron is so funny, and comics on that show are so natural and funny. It's great. I want to get on a celebrity panel themed mm-hmm. show. And I'm not going to do that by going on no. dates. Yeah. You're not. And here's the thing. You know, I like to say that I punched in the clock about nine years ago and haven't punched out. Okay. No, you're always working. 365. If you're a stand-up comedian, you're always working. You're always looking yeah. at things and go, hmm, 
Is there an interesting take I can have on that? Hey guys, right. let's, let's speaking of that, let's go ahead and do a quick text break. Let's uh, yeah, let's I go ahead and check our. Well, text. I gotta, I've been doing. I've been tweeting every fifteen minutes now. Hold on. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh man, I I'm, set up auto tweeter. I have a timer. Yeah, that's, you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick Instagram of this. Well, if you retag me, I'll make a vine of you Instagramming it, and then we can. Uh, I have I got this new bot. This guy made this bot where it'll make it'll take previous tweets you've made and rewrite them and post them without while you're sleeping. Let's do this. Oh, that's I'm gonna great. Go, that's awesome. I'm gonna take an Instagram of you two fellas, and then while I'm doing that, why don't you vine? This okay, here Instagram we go. Instagram and you vine Hold on Johnny. A second. Or you could do the the video function on Instagram. Are you ready? And, yeah, hold on. Let me put my vapor pen down. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I got to put my vape down too. These That's e-cigs a, are great. Yeah, I love these e-cigs. They're amazing. Yeah, I love it. Oh, okay. crap. I have a branding meeting. You got a branding meeting? After the audition. <laughs> got it. That's what I love about your name, Brendan. Comedy. It's so close to branding, and it's like, I, you, and you're so good at that. <laughs> want to you, you, you just do a little nightcap here on this vine? I want to make sure this goes viral. Okay, here um, we go. And are you ready to vine? Yeah, Brandon? I'm gonna do one, two, three, and I'll get oh, you yeah, burnt. We'll get you one, two, three. All right, great. There you go. Let's just check out this vine. Make sure it works. That's great, man. It's great. Great. And you know, Wonderful. I said comedy in there. Um, uh, but I said it without without smiling because it's not a funny business. Serious business. Yeah. Uh, well, look, guys, all of us have had a great year, and I, I hope that the people listening to this right now don't think that we're rubbing it into their face. No, uh, you know, Brendan, you, um, I, I've seen you on uh, a couple episodes of Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Johnny, you've been on Chelsea. Mm-hmm. I'm working on getting on Chelsea. You'll get on. I've put in a good word for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd really appreciate that. And I, you know, I know that you, I know that you guys have. I'm going to say it, you guys have put in a little bit. You put a little more work into it than I have. But uh, it's a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, and it's just being prepared. You just have to. You have to have the chops when they call you because the it's not. They don't just usher you right into that show. No, this is what happens. You get seen three years later. What you were working on three years before. That's when you get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you got to have you, you it's like preparing for a tornado. And and Brendan, um I want to bring up this amazing idea that you have. Uh, you were telling me about and I think this is I a was just wonderful say podcast that. to announce your idea. Well, this is the idea. You you just pointed out that Johnny and I have both been on Chelsea. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's and just one of one panel. But yeah. That's uh, yeah, exactly. Many things. That's one of many things that we've done. And I've decided because i just it was just a holiday weekend i don't know when you're going to release this but um i I went to a lot of parties over the weekend you gotta you have to yeah you have to you got to get in there you got to network it's not just for having beers and barbecue can you talk about some of the premier comics you ran into at some of these parties um i don't really want to name drop gabriel iglesias told me that's tacky Uh, um yeah 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 he's full of advice he is. He knows what he's doing. He's like brimming with advice. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're right. Okay. Well, I'm not going to ask you to to name drop, but I imagine that can, can you. There were some good ones. Ralphie there was some. Rob Schneider was at a party. Mm. Uh, Ralphie May actually. Yeah. This was a barbecue. Now this was a good one because it was there was. This is the kind of party I want to go to in Los Angeles. It was all industry. Yeah. So it was like a lot of networking and Ralphie actually gave a speech during the party That's about so cool, man. success in comedy so and the cool. steps That's you great. have to take. And here's this brings me to uh, the idea that you mentioned. Yes. <clears throat> um, you spend a lot of time when you're at these parties or at social events, and you'll be networking with somebody, but you yes. don't really know their credits. You don't know what they've done. Yes. And right. Johnny and I were talking about this um, in the ri- on, on the uh, ride over, was wouldn't it be great if we had medals that we could wear for each uh, achievement that you had in exactly. show business? Love you it. could wear a medal, kind of like a merit badge for um, I mean, Boy Scouts or something. But that way you can see exactly what the person you're you're talking to has accomplished. Yes, and also it gets right to because a lot of times when I'm having a conversation with someone. There's a lot of, you know, back and forth of you're just kind of small. You're, you're feeling, feeling it out. out. Yeah. That takes and, time away from me writing. Well, and yeah. it, it takes time away from me because I want to get to telling them yeah. what I've done. Yeah, right. exactly. And There's so, so then, much, like, this is a frustrating thing, but because even before you get in the conversation, to me, it's like I when I walk into a club, 
I don't want to have to wait for somebody to come up and ask me what I've been up to to tell yeah. them all my credits. Right. I want to be able for them to see my credits on my They can shirt. see you have they three can. Chelsea Handler medals, and right. then they'll say, or oh, well, let me, let me you've make this done analogy it three here. times. What's the most successful organization in America? Comedy the military. Central. The, well, right. Uh, the largest, most successful organization is the military. The military. Right. And what is the military? And all you got to support the troops. You got to. You, can, you have to. I saw a comic the other day of not course. supporting the troops, making a making a sort of I don't know if a sarcastic or whatever a joke about military. Whoa! <laughs> uh, buy your ticket home, buddy. Uh, that's that's not a buy comic. Whatever home. that is is not, not a, a comic. comic. No, that's you could. You saying. should. I'm. I think you should be arrested for saying things you like should. that, I mean, especially in this post 9/11 world we're living up. in. I mean, lock this is the up. thing that is so shocking to me, and I think we're getting a little off course because I love your idea, but this this thing that is so very shocking to me is that there's been a debate about whether or not comics can do rape jokes on stage. Okay, yeah. Do all the rape jokes you want. Have fun getting booked at a corporate gig. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, good luck working for a Fortune 500 company making the... Some, I mean... Are you not going to get a good write-up no, on the AV not. club? No. I mean, you what maybe you trying will, to prove? but you're not... The real money of these corporate gigs, man, that's what these kids just don't get. Well, they're, 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 you got to work clean, you got to work hard. And you got to these... work clean, and you got to be clean, Brendan. Mm -hmm. yeah. There has never been a successful comedian that yep. smoked marijuana. That is no. so true. Maybe they're like, you might be a, a marijuana smoker listening to, to this right now and, being, and thinking to yourself, some of my favorite comedians are marijuana smokers, but you know what? The only person who knows about them are you and other marijuana smokers and it's a very small group of very people small. and also uh, next time you go to one of uh, the marijuana smoker comedian shows enjoy having your stereo stolen out of your car while yeah. you're in the show <laughs> yeah one of those alt rooms there yeah, yeah. and good, good luck seeing one of them in a voting booth uh, ever oh yeah, yeah. why don't yeah. you ride your marijuana smoke to Illinois to one of your an A-list club because mm -hmm. you're lit you know what I people who smoke marijuana who think they're going to be <laughs> successful comedians I say uh, that's a pipe dream <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's great can I use that yeah, oh, you probably really have. That. No, no, no. You can use that. You can use that. But back to the medals. Yeah. Now, here's a here's a twist on it because I do have. Um, I'm developing my own show for um, for its uh, epics. It's a new channel. Oh yeah, and, I think um, they're doing a lot of great stuff. They've got some big lots producers. of deals. But here's the thing. Yeah. So on the, on your left uh, breast, uh, you wear the medals of achievement. Mm -hmm. The shows yes. you've been on, the Fergusons, the the Handlers. Yes. The um, Parks and Recs. The Comedy Central specials. The specials. The, the length of the special, too. Yeah. It's important. So you have those medals on the left side of your of your jacket yes. or shirt. On the right side are pending medals. Oh, so it, it has the meetings oh. that you're going to. It oh, has the, the script uh, readings, the table reads that you're doing. That. Uh, it has even... And you could even have medals for if you're doing a web series with it, some... Uh, web series uh, is... That's... Well, it's a good launching pad. Yeah, Hear me know, out. I, 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 Here's what I, I think about it. Here's what I think about web series. It's a networking party that has a camera. It's That's a networking it party with a camera, but camera. also right. it's a great way to to get your resume credits mm -hmm. up because I just did a web series and uh, I was uh, the writer, the producer, the director, and the star. That's there are yes. four huge credits to have on your resume. It's a great way to meet. I, it'll get you maybe. I mean, I see some of these things on IMDb, and guys, I get it. Right. But you know, a lot of these people out there, they're uh, they go around and uh, talk about how important it is to do a podcast, for example. Mm -hmm. right. And this is fun. I do this for fun. I, I, I'm not doing this for anything more. Get than your name out there. It gets yeah, but it's it's like y y the real move is to get on TV. To quote Jay Leno. And he said this directly to me. Man, that's so cool. Somebody Comedy did. Magic Club, Sunday nights. Yes, he yep. said yeah. this directly to me. That's how you do it. If you're not on TV, you're not winning. Yep. That that's, is so true. Yeah, that is so true. Can't argue with that. Yeah, you because know, it's the medium of, medium of the people. I love TV. There's so much good programming right now, especially today. There's so that's much great. good programming. and A lot of I, good cable shows. A lot of great network shows. Great network shows, and it's like it, it, for a comedian not on TV, it's like taking a polar bear out of the snow. I would say it's that's like a great a, analogy. A comedian not on TV is like a forest that has no trees. Do you have an analogy? Comedian not on TV is um, a person who didn't go to bed early and mm -hmm. decided to rise too late and missed the boat to Sony Studios. Yes, yeah. A comedian By boat, he mean. 
uh, affordable car that's really dependable. Comedian not on TV is a um, uh, You're supposed to get a Prius. Somebody now. at Sizzler who forgot yeah. their dentures. Um, I just want to say one quick thing about web series, though. I would I want to cut you off, but no. the thing about web series is great, and this sounds shallow, but it's true. It's just a great way to meet women who aren't looking for any type of a commitment. So, because they know that you're a working comic, and you don't have time for a relationship. Hey. Well, here's the other thing: everybody like just in it for a quick thing, because she knows that you just <laughs> they get you going, and that's it. Well, I'm that's the kind of stuff you probably don't want to talk about on the pot. You yeah, can edit that I'll out, though, that out. because that out. your like, personal life is yeah. it, it should just be instead of talking about <laughs> being, uh, the BJ. Yeah. Well, is uh, be seen in public with the actress like, and well, that's, insinuate. That's what I mean, Johnny, you know, this is in, w- essential. The last thing I want to do is lecture you, and the last thing I want to do is lecture anybody. But what you, you, you the, here's two two things. Number one, no commitments. You don't even need to say that because people listening to this know we're professionals, so they know that's not not well, our thing. Some of them you never know. Do you, have you seen my new bumper sticker on the back of my car? I haven't seen it. it was Coexist dark. one. No, no, that's <laughs> old. But yeah, yeah. That, I love that. It's, I love uh, the irony in that. I didn't come to Hollywood to get married. That's great. Well, I, I agree with you completely, though. That's such a great bumper sticker. That's hilarious. Yeah, but that's so that's that, that's number one. Number two, we're not up. We're not out. We're not here to. People don't want to know about your personal life. People want to feel when they see a celebrity, when they hear a celebrity, they want to feel that the celebrity is on a higher level than them. Mm-hmm. They don't exactly. want to know about your sexual habits or any kind of personal intimate details about your life. Well, you put that you put that away. You do not talk about that at all. Cuz that totally is, it's distracting. It's distracting. It's like a thing that's not it's so far from the craft. It's so removed from the Well, comedy. you don't want to give it's like uh, the Wizard of Oz. You don't want to give them that peek behind yeah, the curtain. It sullies, it sullies the the whole experience, and you're yeah. Yeah. you're talking about. These you don't hear Jerry Seinfeld talking about his doctor's appointment. No, you do the not. Other day. We're, uh, you do we're not. gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut to a, a quick uh, vape pen commercial, and then when I get back, I want to talk about meet and greets and the cool. politics oh, of meet and greets. Great. It's the craftsman. Negative one. I'm tired of being a walking asterisk. Negative two. I'm tired of feeling guilty every time I want to light up. I'm Steven Dorff. I've been a smoker for 20 years. And I just found the smarter alternative. Blue e cigs Blue lets me enjoy smoking without it affecting the people around me. Because it's vapor, not tobacco smoke. That means no ash. And best of all, no offensive odor. With Blue, you can smoke at a basketball game if you want to. And how about not having to go outside every 10 minutes when you're in a bar with your friends? The point is, you can smoke blue virtually anywhere. We're all adults here. It's time we take our freedom back. Come on, guys. Rise from the ashes. It's the Craftsman. And we're back. For those of you just tuning in, you are listening to The Craftsman, a podcast about the art and craft of stand-up comedy and uh one um uh, one there's a lot of different ways that um you can bring in money when you're out there on the road and i think one really easy way to do that in a place where a lot of comedians um fall short is the meet and greet Mm -hmm. because a lot of times a comic will after a show come out and uh, say hello to everyone after mm-hmm. a show. Go and mingle with the fans. Mm-hmm. Go and talk. Right. Uh, I, I just don't think this is an appropriate thing to do. I think that you're devaluing yourself, and that the best move to make after a show out on the road is to charge an extra twenty, fifteen to twenty dollars for VIP tickets, mm-hmm. and let the the real fans come backstage and have a chance to shake your hand and take a picture. Totally. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I think if you're not monetizing something. That you can monetize, you're not winning the game. Well, when you're starting out, Indeed. you should have do the meet and greet, but have some merch. Oh, have some yes. merchandise to be selling. It yes. doesn't have to be one of your albums. T-shirts. Although I do recommend t shirts are the best. That's hands down. hands down. You put one of your jokes on a t shirt. And you don't even need to put a, your, one of your jokes on a t shirt. You can just have a t shirt with a funny image yeah. on it like i have this one that i've been doing for a while i've been selling it it's an image of mount rushmore 
and all the presidents are wearing like those googly eyeglasses. Bingo. And that's great. That's like it's public domain. Everyone will Everyone wear it. Gets it old or young. Yeah. It's American. It's got you know I can never be. I can't tell you how much that wins across the board. Well, it works and I work on a lot of levels. Because like I mean, that guy, he goes and sees you. I should have just got money for saying that. So, I mean, <laughs> seriously. Uh, talk, speaking of, uh, yeah. But somebody goes to see you. They wear that shirt to work or to a, a birthday party. Or a softball game. Or a softball yes. game. Corporate Everyone's like, where game. did you get that shirt? That's and they're hilarious. like, and then it's got your website on the back. Exactly. JohnnyPembertonComedy.net. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Th- that's really good. And also, um, you know, another great thing you can do uh, is you can uh, have, you know, bring cards that oh. you put out on the tables that have your uh, mailing list. Your mailing list, your website. Your Get people to sign the mailing list. List. Just have a notebook out there on the merch table. I mean, a nice notebook. With a big sign that says, sign up for my mailing list, and then I can let you know when I'm going to be in your town. Yes. It's also an opportunity to be kind of funny or clever, like uh, sign up to find out when I'm checking into your zip code again. Something, yeah. something clever. Something that gets people on your side, like, oh, okay, this guy, he's like me. He's one of me. Because people love to immediately identify, and that gives them any chance you get to get to allow someone to get on your ship. Yes, so is, to speak, your so comedy to, ship. Yeah, you want to have a band wagon. Yes, and and yeah, here's the thing. This is this brings us to the next topic of the craftsman, which is such an important aspect of stand-up comedy that I think so many comedians have just forgotten to do, which is the look. Oh, have you gotta have a look. A look. You gotta <laughs> oh, have man. a look. You can't just. Wear uh, a T-shirt. Don't wear your street clothes on stage. No. Here's the thing. It's also, this is the thing that just pisses me off, is the thing where people think they've got a look, but actually it's a look that is distancing themselves from the audience. It's right. creating it's creating a chasm because it makes you look like, oh, oh, intellectual, oh, um, rich person. You know, mm-hmm. I gotta disagree. You know, I think that I think that you, I think it, it's not so I mean look, if you want to do the very lucrative blue collar comedy route right. and come out there with maybe a lawnmower and a backpack filled mm-hmm. with leaves yeah, that's, that's a different. great that's a great look. But if you want to go the other way, because then this is a great thing to do. Here's the bottom line: you, you, and me, mm-hmm. we could have just as easily been real estate agents or oh, stock and made a, s- a ma- lot of money too. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, when we're all making money now, we could have been uh, stockbrokers. We could mm-hmm. have just as easily been worked in PR regional firms, manager. regional managers. We've got those kinds of minds. Yeah. So when we put on our look, it's not as though this is a reflection of who we really are. This is just. Uh, camouflage that we're using to hunt that green dragon that we call money which is why if you're not that smart there's nothing wrong with putting on the clothes that make you seem like you're an intellectual let me put it this way I think we agree here actually you don't see Superman flying around in his street clothes (laughs) no you do not you don't see Batman just putting on his comfortable shoes and going out to fight crime this is, we are superheroes. We're mm-hmm. modern day superheroes. Yes. We say what everybody's thinking and yes. are afraid to say. I mean, if, if you want to look, look around, see what's popular. Times change. Yes. You don't, yeah, maybe blue jeans and t shirts are popular one day. Wear that. But Gel then, your hair. Gel your hair. I'm Do gonna, something. I'm going to give a free hair. pro tip right now. This is a classic look. Anyone can adopt this. Maybe it's not for you, but anyone, if you're in a pinch, this is a classic look for a comedian, okay? Mm-hmm. Jeans. A normal cut of jeans. No. Iron your jeans okay. before you go on iron. stage. But a normal you cut. You iron everything. Don't do this skinny jean crap. I don't want to see that. Yeah. And no. don't do this baggy crap unless you're an African-American performer. It's different because it's a totally different thing, but I'm not talking about that right now. Jeans. Mm. Black t-shirt. Clean. Mm. Not No lint on it. Yes. Yeah. Hawaiian shirt that is open. Do not button it. Hawaiian that, or bowling shirt. Hawaiian or bowling shirt. Bowling shirt instantly, instantly, that is going to give you a look that people get right away. They're like, okay, I can. As soon as you hit that guy, stage, it's casual. People get it and they are on board. I want to party they with that guy. It. Spin the baseball cap to the back. Free yeah. tip. Free tip. There you go. If you, you want to upsell it with that baseball cap move, that is. You're on it, Duncan. Yeah, yeah but we got it's. It, here's there's basically three categories of comedians. Here's what they are: smart comedian, mm-hmm. 
general, the, the general guy, guy in the world comedian, like a joker, you know, the dad, the yeah. dad, the joking mm-hmm. dad, Your office kind of buddy. fella, office buddy, and then Urban, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. like pick which, which, wh- where do you fall? You you fall into yeah. one of those. Figure it out. And if you're gonna do smart, don't really be smart. Talk about you don't want to intimidate. Yes. No, yeah, yeah. I talk about not selling anything after a show. You're gonna sabotage. Look your at politics. Meet and greet. Every night, mm-hmm. every night you're on stage. That's a general election. Yeah, Thank and you. you want people to Brendan, vote for you. That is a great. And you're, and you're not gonna win in, in politics alike. You go up there with your uh, your expensive eyeglasses and yeah. your suit and your Harvard. Uh, College diploma anything pin your lapel. Like that, People are to say no thanks. I want to. I want a guy next door. I want. I'm going to vote for a guy who, who I can relate to. Have a beer yeah, with. Exactly. I want to have a beer I with them. I want to be able to shoot the breeze. Uh, guys, a- um, I want to uh, quickly go around and I want you guys to talk about what you're what you're writing for your blog right now. I'll start with you, Brendan. Um, I just had a new blog. It's about well, it's some of the stuff we've covered. Branding. Keeping it clean, corporate gigs, I can't stress enough. Most comedians that you see out there, our bread and butter is corporate. And if you're going to do political humor or uh, <laughs> dirty, sex-driven humor, yes. you can kiss that corporate money goodbye. Adios. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? Good. Here's another thing. By the way, comics, I'm sure by now there's some grubby, unshaved quote artist comic and by the mm-hmm. way that makes me want to puke oh, when a comic starts a smell. W- waving the artist flag or whatever it's like there is the i guarantee go paint me a picture van gogh get off the stage <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly oh that's a class and i got news for you van gogh was a fucking loser you yeah, can yeah. bleep that right van, I, and i i promise you this van gogh ain't gonna get booked no in uh an a room san francisco <laughs> an a room uh no thank you uh yeah. maybe you can Get in your van and go to an open mic at a coffee shop with the rest yeah. of the other hippies. Can I use that? Yeah. Here, here's right. idea. Hey, uh, who's gonna who's gonna pay for this pizza? Not that guy. Yeah. He's, 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 he's broke. He's but broke. Yeah. here's another thing. Yeah. If you want to be, yeah. uh, here's the fine line. If you want to be a rebel and like a bad boy on stage, fine, do it. But don't. You see, you can't be. If you want to be a real rebel. Go uh, go down to a uh, streetcar named Desire and hang out with James Dean. Yeah, go down. Outdated. What you do is you look at guys like Jim Morrison. Yes. Or um or James Dean. Yes. You see what made them popular, yes. and then you just you and you do you're doing an act. Yeah. You you you're a rebel, but you, on stage you're just trying to give people the idea that you. Do crazy things. You yeah. break all the be rules. Be a hologram. Yeah. You want to be a hologram. You don't want to be be a. If you're, Are you going to be yourself? <laughs> oh, everybody's yeah. dying to listen to Joe Schmo talk. No, no you create not, a character. It's not therapy. Nobody. Don't get out there and yeah. talk about your cancer, Ex- oh, don't Johnny. Be um, I, I want to talk to you about uh, what your what blog topics you're working on right now. Well, I'm working on a lot of the same stuff Brendan is working on because I'm really trying to hit those corporates hard. I have a new blog post. I'm talking about uh, T-shirt designs. I talked a little bit about this earlier, but yeah. a thing I think is really great is that anyone can do is just incorporate an animal design with sunglasses yeah. and anything like that, like a simple sort of combination of like things if that wouldn't go together. That's a great T-shirt right there, slapping mm-hmm. a logo on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been talking about that. I've also been talking about a lot of alternatives to swear words because there's a thing Can where – Can you give us some examples of that? Exactly. Um, I saw – Let's I, say I, the S word, for example. S word. Uh, Shazam. Uh, <laughs> Shapuki. Just stepped in some Shazam. Or some uh, <laughs> That's Shazam. Fun. That's See? already See? funnier. And it's funnier mm-hmm. than the word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't get. Uh, Ninja. Ninja's a great one for that word that gets a lot of people in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's fun because everyone what loves Ninja. That? Well, I'm not going to say it, obviously, but Ninja. Ninja's a great Ninja, one. please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, this is what I love about Brendan. Is Brendan just gets it. He's on board. <laughs> yeah. This is what these kids, they, they just yeah. they don't get it. Brendan gets it. I Ninja, graduated my – oh, well, this is going to age me. Freaker, uh, freak, Almost sorry. 30. Freak. Uh, yeah. Graduated my first uh, stand-up comedy class back in 2003. And, Man. you know, that what you just said ma- makes me think of uh, the importance of lying about your age. Right? Or just divert it. Divert it all together. Yeah. Don't tell them really how old you are. I, I think that's a really important thing. It's, you know, me, I'm 24. Mm-hmm. And when I get to be 39, I'll probably start saying I'm 24. Say so I do the mm-hmm. opposite. Yeah. Say, just bring it down a lot. I'm 36. Yeah. Yeah. But how old are you really, Johnny? <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> exacto mongo baby yeah. exacto mongo important to lie about your age that's what that's what my blog mm-hmm. topic is is a, a good scale to show nobody wants to listen to one of your dad's friends go no. up there no. and tell stories they want someone who is on the verge yeah. And you got your ear to the street. You know what's going on in pop mm-hmm. culture. People love to hear about pop culture. Listen, open up a newspaper, USA Today. That's the only one that you need. That is the best. And here's the thing about USA Today. Um, it's pretty much it. Uh, probably 99% of the hotels I stay at. So yep. no Guys, big deal. Not hard to get. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about the belt buckle. How important is a nice, shiny, beautiful belt buckle on stage? I mean, it's good. I think it depends what look you're going for. Definitely. I think if you're going for... The like that middle range look I was talking about earlier with the uh, Hawaiian shirt open mm-hmm. belt buckle. I mean, that's a great chance to have something funky you can put in your act. Like let's let's say, I mean, this would be a real boon. But if I had, let's say, I had uh, the Mount Rushmore, mm-hmm. it's easy yeah. to get Mount, oh, Mount Rushmore get things right. And guess what? You can get you can get Mount Rushmore themed everything. All it takes is a little marker. Or mm. some putty, and yeah. you put sunglasses on those guys, yeah. and you got a yeah. novelty item here. Yeah. That instantly, people you should are like, look into selling those. Uh, oh, oh, believe me. <laughs> now, <laughs> speaking of selling, I want to talk about a new app that I'm developing, which I'm really excited about. It's called um, Net Party, and what it is is an app that makes it so that when you run your Evite invites, your, you can run your Facebook invites mm-hmm. through it. And what it does is it scans the names in your invite list to see how many times they've been on Chelsea. Oh, yeah. So you can make sure that... Oh, that's such a good idea. Isn't that a good idea? And also, that's a really you, good idea. Yeah. Because, so, you know, you can... I don't I don't want to throw a party or I just don't want to go to a party mm-hmm. where I'm not around successful mm-hmm. people. And I don't know why so many people look down their nose at that. That's why ridiculous. Do I, why wouldn't I want to be around successful people? If anybody's looking down their nose at that, Jealous. they're a hater. Yeah. Jealous. There's just... You got to you ignore the haters. And- right. Some people don't like to work. Some people like you to clock out so you can lower yourself. Well, they're jealous. Them. Yeah, they want. Yeah. they want to see you fail. Yeah, and so they knock all the things, all the proactive things yes. you're doing to help. Well, your career. Usually, it's slackers or irresponsible people who see that you're having a great year and try to drag yeah. you down with their cruel words. They and can't stand it. They they can't stand it. They can't handle it. But it's like, come on. When I'm at well, bon- that's the artist types where they're like, because they'll see all me right. on stage. Yeah, I wear. Um, I got some cool combat boot looking shoes. I got the t- the tears in my jeans. Great. I got the chain wallet. Yes. Um, I and I speaking of belt buckles, I always showcase. I always I wear a different belt buckle every night. That's key. And but I'll just have the front of my shirt tucked in with the back hanging out because that's I fucking it's a cool excuse look. Me, I freaking freaking love that. yeah yeah. I'll go freaking. back and I'll edit that out. I, yeah. I've actually written about some alternatives. To but people say they'll that. say, "Hey, man, you know, chain wallet and like tough guy attitude on stage. What do you? That's not who you are." And it's like. Hello, it's called a show, buddy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hey, it's hey, yeah. show. So please, guys, don't confuse the person with a persona. Yeah, don't exactly. Don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Mm-hmm. Me, yeah. I come on stage and I do an uh, Irish character who's got black parents. Uh-huh. And that's my act, you know? You going to Edinburgh with that? Yeah. I, I. Well, yeah. I've been three times. I do a lot of the international Your festivals. Your agents got you that? What's that? Your agents got yeah, you that? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I, I think could... I'm getting... I just... Sorry, I had a text from my agent just now. Oh, you know what? They've actually just moved up my audition 15 minutes. I guess they're open. Oh, great. They must be seeing a lot of people for this. I mean... Well, actually, they must not, must not be seeing a lot of people for it because they must have had someone drop out. I heard that... Um, and by the way, when Johnny yeah. goes to look at his phone, I don't get upset about that. Mm-mm. If I'm going out to eat with somebody yeah. and they want to spend the majority of their time checking their texts or sending Instagrams or looking at tweets or looking into their phone, that's not going to make me mad because I know they're working yeah. all yeah. the time. It's, I respect it's, that. This isn't, uh, this isn't your uh, local um, grocery store. We don't... We, we never turn the sign around that says, sorry, we're closed. Yeah, exactly. Nah. Uh, here's a little news flash. Big bright neon sign, open 24 hours, hours a day. I'm going to text. If I'm, you know what? I'll tell you. If I'm in bed with you even, I'm going to text. I'm going to check my tweets. I'm going to, if something comes in. But even then, it's like, that. I mean, we talked about this earlier, but I really think that I don't sleep with, no one sleeps with me. You got to sleep alone. You have to sleep alone. Okay, yeah, and I I think that that it's really 
an important thing to um it's rude when people interrupt you when because it's like you know i was at my grandmother's 90th birthday party and there was a big there was a huge audition for it was um one of the uh, real housewives of atlanta yes is is going to be a judge on a fashion show that's yes. big and yeah, and I was gonna, I was up for playing the host. What's well, a huge market? Huge market. Huge, huge market. A and E, yeah. and and also syndication. It's going to be on in a bunch of countries. Huge right. market. And uh, I'm at my grandmother's birthday party. Hey, it's it's a photo op right there. You don't think I didn't put that picture of me and my grandma right on my website front page? <laughs> great. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, That's everybody great. loves their families. I'm going to show I love my family. Absolutely. That's a big thing. <laughs> totally. It, but my it. uncle, it's, re- I was on the, f- you know, I'm texting headshots. You know, I'm sending headshots. These are smartphones. Hello. Yeah. We get emails on them yeah, too. Use I, it. I'm I, signing contracts. I'm sending headshots. And then a- my uncle tells me that I'm being rude. Oh, please. Well, he doesn't know. Yeah, well, he's, he's, well that's the he's bummer about hanging but out he's, with no, family. But he's not. It's a winning uncle. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to spend too much time with your family, but if you are with him, you, you got to give them a little... Uh, you got to see them enough to have pictures right. to... Because even though this is a tricky thing, you don't want to let people too inside. You're not going to be yourself on stage, but you do want to humanize yourself exactly. a bit and show that like, hey, I met a kid. I met a child. Here's a picture right, of me with, with a child. child. is a wonderful way to show people that you are with a child. Some yeah, of these and it's alternative makes comics, p- they seem like murderers to me. <laughs> I got to say. No, but not on stage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. He gets it. He gets it. Uh, so that much. is great, man. And and yeah, but I, I love what you're saying because it's like <clears throat> take the opportunity to get pictures that uh, humanize you. Yeah. Let people see that you're a human being. Let them know that you do have that you're one one of yeah. them. Yeah. And you know, eventually you'll get into that part of star mm-hmm. magazine you know they're just like us us and, weekly yeah. i was almost in us weekly and that's the thing it's like if you're not you, people think you're i was at the away. grove I, I knew i should have stood because um the uh calista flockhart was mm-hmm. there and they were getting a picture of her shopping and mm-hmm. i knew i should have stepped over to the right my shoulder is in us right. weekly well, that, that's not what thing he thinks the best part of the grove about. to stand and to get recognized i think you should just circle the fountain i write from there I just keep my eyes peeled. I'll mm-hmm. sit there with my laptop and, uh, you know, I'm writing, but I'm also scoping it out. Just, seeing if you see any famous faces, maybe, you know, you can take up. a break. Yeah. Saddle put up. your laptop in your yeah. bags. Just kind of, I'm not saying to follow people or stalk people, but any opportunity to get some FaceTime in there oh, because somebody's going to be reading stalking. us weekly and they'll say, hey, there's Callista Flockhart. Oh, is that Brendan Walsh, the bad boy of comedy? Yeah, I love right. him, the her. bad boy of comedy. That's what everybody... When well, I- that's the cool thing. That picture of me and my grandma, I'm, my chain wallet's blazing. My tour, yeah. I got my ripped jeans. Yeah. You know, I did my... I got my hair... Yeah. Uh, did it... You know, it took me a while it's, to get... It's but contrast. It's the worth look it. Going. It's worth it. Because if you're someplace and you're not the way you look on stage, why are you there? Yeah. What's the point of being in public? Mm. I go to the Grove every day I can. I try mm. to go whenever I have time... Whenever I make time to go to the Grove to do mm. writing like you. If I'm not on the road, I'm at the Grove. Yeah. You have to be someplace mm. like the Grove. Mm-hmm. You think that's a good place to network, Brendan? The that's Grove? Great. Oh, my God. Uh, is the Pope a great guy to network about <laughs> Catholicism <laughs> yeah, with? probably. <laughs> uh, Santa Monica Pier is underrated, though. Santa Monica Pier. Uh, second, Third Street Promenade is pretty great. Mm. A lot of commercial casting directors are hanging out there, which is you know it's a sweet place to pick up a good paycheck. Mm. Yeah. I think that uh, Runyon Canyon is highly underrated for comedians. Yeah. Um, what? Because you're getting people. I met Rob Reiner yeah. there. Oh wow! Priceless, wow. Yeah. priceless. Put wow. that in the priceless What's bucket. What's he like? Uh, he was he was in a hurry. He said, but he's a great guy. I had enough time. Gave him a headshot. Gave him a resume and a reel. Wow. <laughs> always have that on you, by Where the way. Where do you keep that? Because I keep a little pouch on my side that's got. Well, I always have my resume. computer. I always have my. Uh, you have a my printer. shoulder bag with uh, no. I have my computer. I have my laptop mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, and then I, I always have a dozen headshots, resumes, and DVDs with my. Room. I have a waterproof leg sleeve that's attached to my that's right great. leg. And so it, if you're swimming, you could even get it when you're swimming. You know, yep. I I carry a printer with me. I have a printer and and a laptop and. That's in case I do run out of my headshots. I can just plug that thing in and print Who it. Who makes that? I've never heard of that. that Gar- sounds- Garrington Incorporated. Oh, wow. I have to check that out. So you can just print it right up there at the Grove. You could print out a headshot. You could print out anywhere, man. I just carry it around. And in it'd my be backpack. an 8x10? 
Yeah. Black and white? Eight oh, you can print out whatever size they want. Well, I, I, I'll ask them. I'll say, what oh, do you want? Wow. You? So, you know, if Rob Reiner's in a hurry, you know, a lot yeah. of times if someone is in a hurry, as many people are, they'll take the time because they like to see the process of setting up your printer and printing yeah. out that shop. That's the thing. You have a cell like that. That is a fish hook for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's cool. People that's, love technology. They yeah. Love it, and that's a cool looking thing. And actually, if Rob Reiner is listening to this, that email address you gave me didn't work. I must have written it down wrong. So. This is a problem. This is why you need to be very careful when you're copying down those emails because that happens to me all the time. Uh, I did it right from my phone and said, okay, I'm emailing you now. And he well, said, yeah, I, but he I, had to I, leave. I, I went through a, some t- for all of last week. I gave him my card. I was, at, uh, yeah, pretty Two. much. In, this has happened to me now three times in a row mm-hmm. where a networker or someone I could network with has right. given me um, their email and I've written it down wrong or they've given me their phone number and it just doesn't work. Yeah. And I do instant confirmation always. I have a new app. I have a second phone now. And I use this phone exclusively for networking. And what I do is I ping it back and I do an instant confirmation with them. So you call them in the moment. In the moment. I say, That's what you got to do. But yeah. I say it with a smile. I'm like, hey, let's just make sure this is real or some, some kind of fun joke. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I say like, yeah. you know, what about one of the presidents? Like, what are you, uh, Abe Lincoln? <laughs> or something, you know, <laughs> a fun thing like that. And then I give them a pair of these sunglasses and, then, you know. Because that's what I do. I get them the sunglasses while I'm doing the check, so they have something to think about. Guys, I, now I, we got to close out. We're uh, hit, coming up to an hour now. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to go around uh, the table and talk about uh, what topics are off limits right now for comedians to make jokes about. Start Ooh. with you, Johnny. I would definitely say um, NSA scandal. Snowden, you should well, even be saying that politics, word. Because... Yeah, right. But specifically, that's like a th- don't even touch that. If you're yeah. touching that, good luck getting anywhere near a place where they keep money yeah <laughs> okay mm-hmm. uh that's off limits definitely i think using uh certain words i think are just connotive of like topics. connotive don't use that right. word yes i'm sorry that. i think i said that it's wrong confusing too confusing yeah no um knows well what I mean. to say the f word to say the s word yeah it's lazy so you're saying don't talk about the nsa don't curse brendan mm-hmm. what are some off limit topics right now that comedians should avoid talking about on stage i say uh Anything that that's not funny, violence towards women. Yeah, um, never funny. That's never funny. Uh, violence yeah. towards anybody, really. It's not funny. Uh, Unless uh, it's like a, a terrorist, I think is. Well, that's the uh, you sure. can make jokes about terrorists, but uh, now you see, I caught wind of this that an alternative comic was making jokes about nine eleven, and right. I, kidding. I, <laughs> I wish I was. Are you serious? Yeah, and yeah. if 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 I ever meet. Pig, who made mm. jokes about mm. that day that changed the world? Yeah, I I know a few. Um, I know a few guys who'd like to have a word with you in the back alley. <laughs> a couple yeah. of my vet friends. Oh, can, man. can we? Uh, just because you brought up a really delicate subject, can we just have a quick moment of silence for that event? With pleasure. Is for nine eleven and the victims. Nine eleven victims. Yeah. I just, got just don't I got end a the troops. Text here one second. No problem. After I you just check that, got, we'll do it. Yeah. You know what? Actually, they're bumping it back. It's going to be a producer's session. Wow. I'm going to be nice. with uh, Kendall Flanagan wow. and Marcy Poster. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. So that's a pretty big deal. Do you want yeah. me to run, do you want to run lines before we go? We should. You know, I just I kind of like the wing it actually. I feel like that's the that's the thing a lot of mm, people do. I don't do. know about that. Well, we'll talk about this Poster, later. Huh? Yeah, Marcy Poster. There's, you know, she's cast some I'm gonna, big films. <laughs> do you mind dropping off one of my uh 2 by 4s Oh, totally. Yeah. I, if you don't mind, I can I give you uh can I can you slip her my reel too? Yeah, I'll slip the reel. Cuz I have I just had a bunch well, I, I've with been my doing latest Chelsea. I do put it on a USB drive by the way. That's something oh, that people that's love. Such a I, good idea. I have a USB wow. drive that looks like my eyes. That's such a good idea. I do convenient and non-convenient. I leave a briefcase with a bunch of stuff in it mm. with like a like you said 2x4, not joking. You take the picture and actually paste it to a piece of very thick heavy wood. So you make it physically uh yeah, they can't not notice that when exactly. you leave that behind in the room. They're going to say, well, what's, could, they'll get a PA. Hey, could you pick that up? And they'll say, like, well, who is this? isn't this one of the guys who auditioned? Right. And they'll say, wait a minute, let me see that. It should be hard to get out the door. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think we should just close on um, what some advice you can give some of the young comics that are listening now. If something they can do this week to see to take their career to the next level. Johnny? Uh, 
Okay, I'll just say Hollywood is not a playground. That being said, you need to be waking up early. I'm talking about if you're waking up past 10 a.m., move back to Jacksonville. Sleepy town. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wake up early. Definitely do not – we're talking about don't use drugs. And also you got to really diversify your packaging materials. Yeah. Really have like – you know – Go to a gas station, see what they're doing with the key to the bathroom, and think outside the box with that. Yep. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. You want to ha- have something that sticks out? Yep. Yeah. Uh, flyers. Uh, this is something, and now with, you know, because we all have websites, we all have Twitter, we all have Tumblr, we all have Instagram. You better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, that, of course. G- you, that goes without saying. You have to have all that. But back to the basics, what's the number one thing you need when you move to Hollywood? Headshots. You mm-hmm. need a good headshot and business cards. Yeah. I never met a successful comedian who doesn't have a business card. So I leave them like breadcrumbs everywhere I go. It, yeah. That's what they're there for. Yeah. And you know what? This is a good thing. Online, you can get thousands of business cards for yes. very cheap and have fun with it. I mean, yeah. definitely have all of your pertinent. Have your Facebook, your MySpace, your Twitter, your Tumblr. You have all that yes. listed on your on your on your uh, business card and. You know, and don't limit yourself. Don't just say, uh, I'm a comedian. Say, actor, writer, producer, comedian. Life And coach. throw something, throw a joke in there too, like elephant trainer yeah. or something. You know, like yeah. it's an icebreaker. That's a great one. That's such a great That's one. That's hilarious. Yeah, elephant uh, trainer, ant wrangler. Or if you don't want to do, uh, if you don't want to do a joke on it, if you're more. Grain of sand counter. Yeah. And you throw a joke in there or. Or, you know, if you're going to go the more serious route, because, I, you know, like me, I have my business card, has my name, my, my website, my Facebook, my MySpace, my Twitter, my Tumblr. Yeah. And then just, uh, and then it says actor, writer, producer, comedian. Director. And then it's director. And then um, underneath of that, it says a force to be reckon, reckoned with. Yeah. That's and that great. just that's makes great. people, and they're th- like, that, huh, that this guy's serious. To- to, to my bit of advice, which is when you send an email, there's a function that you can do in most email programs where you could have in the email a saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. So my yeah. saying is just live the dream. Mm-hmm. Duncan. Yeah, that's great. So guys, thank you so much. Um, oh, this is Brendan Walsh. Text Thanks, here. guys. Brendan Walsh Comedy dot net. Follow me on Twitter. Brendan underscore Walsh uh, comedian. On Twitter, comedian, and I'm here. And Johnny, this is Johnny Pemberton checking a text. Oh, okay, um, yeah, I'm good here. Yeah, I think they've moved it back a little bit further now, and it's going to be with Wendy Zaxson. I don't know her, but it says I think I did an IMDb ping. She said she's was a producer in a lot of big, uh, big NBC stuff. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, super funny, super funny Johnny Haha comedian. Mm. At that's it's at at that. Twitter. But that's one of them. Right. I have a couple other ones. Johnny all Comedy just, Blogspot. All just derivations of. Yeah. All just changes in that same word. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hit me up, and we'll do some shows, and be super funny. And uh, oh, and, uh, I'll be on Chelsea lately uh, Thursday night, July fourteenth. Right. I'll be paneling. It's uh, me, Mo Mandel, and Angela Johnston. That's great. Cool. Any way I can maybe hang out in the green room with you? Yeah, me too, yeah. man. Maybe I can bring I, get a by. Gu- I can bring one guest. So okay, well we can probably we can do like a funny thing together where we're like act like we didn't know or do the thing where we wear a suit. Yeah, where he's like or we're a very tall guy. That well, would be my great. agent and uh, my agent will be with me, but oh, I but he, they, they get in no matter what. Well, whatever yeah. you know, yeah. maybe just you know when you're there, I, I'll send you a text and you could say I'm getting a text from Duncan. You know, yeah. loud enough for someone there to hear. Okay, thank you guys so much. You're listening to the Craftsman. You can send any questions uh, regarding the show to my fan email, which is Duncan Trussell, funny as can be, again and again, at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening.